Okay. Um, for those of you who uh, forgot, last time uh, we stopped uh, in this slide where uh, I promised you uh, after the first hour of recounting, uh, in some sense, the history and the main uh, uh, the main themes of research in uh, algorithmic game theory, uh, and also uh, postponing much of the material, so very rough outlines of everything with uh, references to forthcoming talks. Uh, uh, I promised a second uh, lecture with uh, uh, some more current stuff, what's going on now. Uh, 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 in my world, in my co in my little corner, uh, but uh, also some uh, some uh, forward-looking stuff, some some uh, thoughts that I have about uh, uh, what the field uh, could have been doing. Uh, also, okay. So let me start with uh, with uh, the internet. Okay, as as I, as I said yesterday, uh, the internet is uh, for me the true reason that uh, so many computer scientists uh, turned uh, to algorithmic game theory. And uh, uh, to the truth is, okay, I see it better. Uh, incidentally, I'm going, I'm, you know, that was, uh, I was also going to talk about dynamic mechanism design, but then I decided that that's too much. So I'm going to omit uh, the dynamic mechanism design and the ensuing fight with uh, uh, Jason. Yes. <laughs> so, um, um, uh, okay. So, uh, the internet. Um, right now, from where I see it, it seems to me that, uh, that the only thing we care about the internet now is ad auctions, okay? And, and uh, this is it's a pity, okay? Uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, the internet 15 years ago when you started looking at it, I mean, you know, I, uh, you know in preparation for this talk, I read uh, a paper I had written 14 years ago for, uh, for, uh, uh, for a stock in Greece, uh, uh, algorithms, games, and the internet. And sort of, you know, the vision was that we should, we should uh, sort of, uh, uh, that theoretical computer scientists, through algorithmic game theory thinking, would be charting the future of the internet. Okay, and this has not quite happened, right? I mean, and in fact, we have lost track. Uh, the internet has changed. Uh, for example, I mean, oh, there is, uh, there is, uh, there is caching and there is cloud. Okay, and there is pretty much nothing else. Okay, uh, and and uh, and uh, uh, it is still a source of uh, great uh, algorithmic game theory problems, uh, so much that uh, a lot of networking people have been, uh, you know, they have continued working, you know, in, uh, with algorithmic game theory uh, techniques and methodology uh, on, their, on the internet problems. So one, uh, one, uh, one interesting uh, uh, realm of, of uh, questions has to do with the economics of, economics of the cloud. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 Alex Somas from, from my group uh, is, uh, is working on this uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, the networking group. Um, uh, BGP is still a fascinating problem and a lot, there is a lot being done uh, by networking people using uh, 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 algorithm game theory techniques. In fact, I'm told, even using Scarf's lemma uh, for uh, you know to uh, uh, to uh, address uh, the still uh, uh, intractable complexities of, of BGP. Okay, uh, BGP. Uh, you know, I hate when people use uh, initials in, in, in their talks. Okay, so you know, <laughs> BGP. I think it's called. Uh, it means it's the it's the. Uh, 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 Bor, oh, sorry, what's the first word? Border, border gate, border, border gate uh, pro protocol. Okay, uh, is uh, is the top level uh, uh, protocol by which uh, different ISTs. 
internet service providers uh, the, uh, uh, the internet uh, 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 communicate in order to uh, uh, in order to create uh, connectivity okay so and uh, create connectivity and make money okay so so it's it's a, it's a very it's a, you know it's, it's it's a very intricate uh, problem uh, net neutrality okay uh, I don't know if any of you have has followed the, the, net, the economics literature on net neutrality. It's an amazing problem. It's a crucial problem. And, and uh, uh, the economics literature is very rich and utterly uninformed. Okay? You know, so, so basically, sort of, you know, they, they, uh, people who really get the internet have not yet written uh, uh, sort of, you know, the, the definitive uh, uh, work on net neutrality. Okay, that's, that's, uh, that's, I think, an amazing problem. And uh, for last, uh, coming back to, uh, to, ad, to uh, uh, ad auctions, uh, I think that what is missing, you know, that, that, that the, the advent of the internet and the, uh, and the rise of, uh, of uh, internet advertising, so, you know, AdWords and, and, and banner ads and so on, uh, has uh, created a situation where one has to start and think, okay, so, you know, what is advertising? What is advertising? Really, what is advertisement? I mean, uh, it's not my favorite industry in the world, okay, you know, but, 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 uh, but what, what, is, what does... Uh, 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 what does uh, a, a content provider sell to an advertiser? Okay, what is it that they sell? Okay, they basically, what does the New York Times sell to an advertiser? All right, I mean, so what it sells is uh, is what it knows about uh, a person. Okay, and basically that uh, this person it's Sunday morning and this person has turned uh, to page six. Okay, you know that this, this is basically what what uh, what uh, now. Uh, what does uh, a search engine sell to an advertiser? Okay, something much more complicated. Okay, you know, so you know, I don't think that I don't think that we have quite focused on uh, developing a, an interesting theory. So you know, of what of what this is and of what this good is, and uh, what are its specific properties. In any event, I mean, no, I really think that there is uh, there is uh, a lot to be done there that is not being done. Okay. Um, Incidentally, with Tim uh, at lunch, we discussed that uh, uh, that the uh, uh, the bootcamp has been uh, less uh, active and combative than usual. Okay, you know, so 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 you know, feel free. I mean, so you know, I, um, feel free to interrupt um, and so on. Okay, so um, no. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this system seems to be like the first seven layers. The action seems at the higher layers, right? In the internet, I sort of uh, like BGP economics of the cloud. Is so, there, like more action at the you know sort of the, the, the application right now. I see. Okay. So what do you mean? You know, so so you are saying you are saying that that uh, okay. So I guess when I'm thinking of the internet, I'm thinking of the of the of the of the seven layers. Okay, right. I mean, so of the lower layers, you know. But but. Uh, uh, that's I you know it's training, but uh, but you mean that that in applications there is the for example, right. like you know, re, you know the the moving of bits and bytes and storing them, like that sounds to be just invented technology. What you do with it? Actually, is, yeah. So moving of bits and bytes has interesting game theory because of the uh, the rules of the internet, right? The different backbones can play games with. How they handle packets and you know. To so I guess that this 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 is this is the realm I have been I have been I have been uh, uh, I have been presenting. So you know, but but Amin says so. You want to tell us more? Um, right. So you know, if you think about the application layer, you know, sort of it's like now that we have this technology, what we do with it? I sort of you know, punch yeah. sort of the, when you look at the social, like the advent of social networks, for example. Okay, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes, 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 definitely. Yes, right. Yeah. So, so you are saying, okay, okay, of course, yes. Uh, and and and, I'm, and it's coming. Yes, I'm, I'm. You know, at least I'm going to do to do some to say to do lip service to to to, to social networks. Okay, okay, good. Uh, okay. Uh, so let me let me let me talk about uh, to give you an update on approximate Nash. Okay. Uh, uh, 
LSS is a long story short, okay? So, you know, I, I, could, I, could, I could speak a long, a long time about this, but... but uh, 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 <laughs> okay, so... Uh, uh, so here's what I mean, that, uh, that uh, when, uh, when, uh, we, when a problem is intractable, uh, then uh, computer scientists are trained to turn to approximation algorithms, okay? And, uh, and to measure the success or, you know, by, by how close the approximation algorithm is to actual optimum, or to the actual solution. Uh, and, you know, somebody, as somebody who sort of uh, participated a lot in this race, okay, so, you know, to, 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 up, to approximate, uh, to come up with, with the sort of, you know, approximate Nash, uh, as you know, this race is stuck at, at 0.3, okay, sort of, you know, that, that uh, you know, it, it was, it was, uh, uh, and uh, for about, I guess, eight, seven years now. So, um, uh, and uh, this gave me time to sit back and realize that it was a wrong race, okay, you know, that, 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 uh, that only, uh, are, you know, in other words, uh, the only kind of approximate Nash equilibrium that, that we're interested in are the one that is so approximate that uh, no, no, no agent in the right mind would lift a finger to uh, change, okay, to, to, div to uh, uh, defect. Uh, so, uh, 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 and, and the reason is uh, it's uh, the cur you know, what I call the curse of, of easy best response, okay, that how, you know, how can with a straight face uh, present an approximate Nash equilibrium to somebody and say, play this, okay, uh, and sort of, you know, and, and to many players, okay, when uh, uh, they say, wait a minute, this is not, this is not best response, why should I play? Right, I mean, so, um, uh, you know, compare with the traveling sales no problem, okay, sort of, you know, you, you, can, you can march in a customer's uh, uh, office and uh, give them your solution and say with authoritative uh, manner and tone that uh, this is the best that science can do, okay? Take it or leave it, okay? But not, not, not in a game, okay? So it's, it's a completely different realm, okay? It's a completely different realm of applying approximation algorithms, okay? So, so for this reason, we focus on PITAS, which means arbitrary close. Uh, so the question is, is there a polynomial time approximation scheme, uh, an algorithm that approximates as close as you want, uh, of course, at, at the expense of uh, uh, more and more uh, uh, demanding polynomial time? Uh, uh, or is there PPD completeness for, for some epsilon? Okay, so this has been, uh, for 10 years now, uh, the main open problem. And the main open problem has been solved, okay? So, you know, uh, uh, Aviad, uh, just proved that uh, there is uh, there is a PPD complete, okay. Uh, uh, with one proviso, okay, for n-player games, for multiplayer games. That that's that's uh, in the last stock. Uh, okay, so um, this leaves us with a very interesting problem. Uh, how about two or three players? Okay. Can we extend Avia's result to two or three players? That's a very, very interesting problem. And the question is, uh, we can't. Uh, because uh, we know from uh, uh, 12 years ago, uh, Lipton, Markakis, and Mekta proved that there is a quasi-polynomial time approximation scheme, okay? So if you prove that, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, two or three, uh, you know, finite number of players is a, is, a, uh, is a PPAD hard problem, this means that all of PPAD uh, has a quasi-polynomial time, uh, quasi time algorithm, which you don't believe. So there seems to be uh, that, we are, uh, that we are stuck, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, and at that point, uh, uh, what do you do? Uh, and, uh, and, we, uh, and there is something to do. Uh, and uh, we, you know, we came up with a problem that we call uh, "Can almost everybody be almost happy?" Okay, which, if you think about it, is is, uh, is uh, a very interesting uh, question, right? So, um, uh, so what is delta epsilon Nash? It's a new problem. Basically, given an n-player game, of course, presented in some in some uh, succinct way, for example, as multi multi matrix, yeah. 
This seems to fail your best response rule. In what sense? The Delta players weren't happy. Okay, okay, of course, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not proposing it as something that to achieve. Okay, I'm proposing it as something that 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 is not possible. Okay, all right. We have a good point. Uh, uh, okay. So what uh, what Aviad usually says is is uh, the Delta players. Uh, you send somebody to talk to them. Okay, right. <laughs> so um, so uh, uh, is can an end player game? Find a strategy profile such that one, uh, one, delta, one, one minus delta fraction of the players are within epsilon or be, of best response. Okay, so that, that, that's a very interesting, that's a very interesting problem, and uh, uh, we know that uh, this is uh, PPID complete for delta equals zero. That's obvious result, and the conjecture is that for some small delta, it's still PPID complete. Okay, that's this is the conjecture, right? And it turns out that if you strengthen the conjecture a little. Then you have a very interesting result. So here is here is a, here is a theorem. Uh, if for some delta and epsilon, uh, the delta epsilon nas requires two to the n time, and in fact uh, uh, doesn't have to be exactly two to the n, can be like n to the n to the uh, two thirds or something, two to the n to the two thirds. Then uh, uh, the quasi polynomial time algorithm, uh, you know, you can't get better than quasi polynomial. Okay. In other words, this there is a way to reduce this problem to uh, uh, to uh, the uh, approximate Nash equilibrium such that uh, it rules out algorithms that are better than quasi polynomial. All right. Uh, and this is uh, this is uh, this is in the archive. I, I've forgotten exactly the statement of the that 2003 result. In particular, I thought it was for two or three players, in which case I'm confused about delta. Sorry, uh, which result? This this theorem is about the 2003 result. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so right, right. So, so what I'm saying, uh, okay, it says the following: that uh, that there is an algorithm that is quasi polynomial, uh, has of course uh, epsilon in the denominator of the exponent. Which uh, gives you an epsilon Nash equilibrium. For any n? No. For any fixed n. So this is translating a hardness result for many players, a conjectured hardness result for many players, to a result for a Reducing. So, so these are two different problems. And I'm saying that one can be reduced to the other in an interesting way. So that if this problem does not have has an exponential, all the exponential algorithms, then this problem does not have quasi polynomial algorithms. What I'm confused about is in the theorem statement, n is a variable, and in the theorem I thought n was a constant. Uh, sorry. Uh, n is, uh, is uh, length of the input. So n is the generic n that we use, that we use in, our, in, our, in our description of algorithms. Okay. okay. Uh, but you are right. Uh, well, you, you are right. I used it. Sorry. Yes, it's like in 2002, result, they use n as a number of rows, but it's a constant number of plates. Right. Yeah. So so right. But I mean, no, let's say n is the n is the the n of 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 the of the of the algorithm class. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So that's so that's. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is a recent result, and then you can find it in the archive. Okay, so that I think this this concludes my uh, my uh, uh, oh, uh, in some sense uh, we call this uh, uh, not in some sense. I mean, oh, in many ways, this is a PCP for PPAD in the in in the following ways, in the following two important ways. So the, when I say PCP, I mean that the Delta epsilon Nash is a PCP. In what sense? That is a PCP-like result. Two ways, two senses. One, uh, it does require, you know, how, how do you call it? Witnesses uh, uh, to witness a solution. You really require to find a number of random bits. Okay, so it is PCP in this way. Okay, and uh, that's uh, true for the delta epsilon Nash problem. 
And it's uh, also PCP-like in a different way, but we have this theorem that says that it's exactly the assumption you need in order to prove in approximability. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, proving that, uh, proving that uh, this is, uh, this is uh, PPAD hard, and in fact, by a quasi-linear or, or, or slightly worse, perhaps, uh, 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 reduction is, uh, is uh, a very important problem now suggested by this theorem. Okay, I mean, if, if you have more questions about this, I'll be delighted to entertain them. Now or later? Uh, now is good. Oh, it's good. So the statement says require 2 to the power n time. Yeah. It's different from PPA to completeness, right? Right. So what I'm saying is that, is that then you only need the ETH for PPAD. Once you have a good, a good reduction, uh, the only assumption you need to make is ETH for PPAD. And how is the input described in the delta epsilon hash? As, uh, uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's, let's say it's, it's, uh, it's a degree three uh, graphical game. Yeah. Did contract ask you to like, Sorry? Is it contract positive like if, like, if and only if or just if? If and only if what? So like if there, like the, if there is a, a sub quasi polynomial time algorithm for two players, does it imply something for data? Oh, uh, I do not know. Do you? It will be done in less than, asymptotically less than exponential. Like 2 to the square root n. What could? So if, if there is an algorithm for 2 player Nash, then you, yeah. then you get an algorithm for, a sub exponential algorithm for delta epsilon. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Oh, that's what I'm Yeah, this is exactly yeah, what I'm saying. Okay. Sorry, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I mean, okay, you can, of course, you can, of course, read it, uh, yeah, right. It's not if and only if, but it's, you can, of course, read it backwards, yes, right. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Well, well this is really interesting. So is this really all we know about the relationship between ETH and what you call PPAD? Uh, so ETH by ETH, I mean the extension to ETH to PPAD. Okay, that that uh, that um, that PPAD requires uh, uh, re requires uh, exponential uh, PPAD. Let's say the generic problem with PPAD, which is uh, called uh, end of the line, uh, requires uh, exponential time. And you don't even need expo exact exponential as long as it's better than better than two to the square root. And then, then you will need a linear, uh, some, some, some kind of efficient reduction uh, to this problem. But as far as this room knows, nothing is understood between, about the relationship between PPAD oh, and Oh, 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 the, 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 real, the real ETH. Okay, 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 no, no, yeah, 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 I don't. Anybody? This would be the, I mean... Yeah, so, so, for all I, for all I know, the, for all I know, the, the, the PPAD ETH did not exist three months ago. Okay, so, yeah, okay. There is a, we know about crypto and PPAD. Yes, I know that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And there is one sub exponential algorithm for a two player game, but that's not PPAD hard. Uh, Uri and. Uh, do I know this? This is like stochastic. Sub exponential. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, okay, yes, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is sort of you know, a different, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good points. Okay, All right. Excellent. Okay, so it's it's. Drew. Uh... Okay. Okay. So let let me go to my get to my next next. Uh, uh, I promise to 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 pay lip service to uh, to uh, social networks. So I know. So uh, here is a problem that I find really attractive. Okay, and I don't know I don't know how much it is in the in the in the crosshairs of of, of the community. Uh, you know that uh, that over the years we have we have uh, we have been proposing network creation games, uh, uh, and the basic uh, problem, the, the basic purpose of this, the main purpose of, of such activity, 
is uh, to uh, sort of conjecture that, well, probably that's how the Internet came about, okay? Or this this captures a lot of the a lot of important ways that, that a lot of important things that happen in the internet. And once you once you have such a such a such a game, then you want to prove that uh, the results you know the equilibrium of this game look very much like the internet. Okay, for example, in in the internet, what do you know about the internet? That it has uh, a giant component, a uh, strong component component that its degrees are parallel distributed and all that, okay? So, in, and if you can, are able to prove or, 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 or establish experimentally these facts, then you win, okay? That this, that this is a nice, mo you know, a, a credible model, at least with respect to this criterion for uh, the Internet. So, uh, uh, you know, for social networks, this is a different, a different board game, okay? Because basically you need to come up with, uh, again, a uh, utility that reflects reality. Okay, it's not it's not it's not completely unreasonable for, uh, for to to say that uh, the typical the typical uh, participant in a social network. Well, this is this is how we'll measure uh, uh, her happiness uh, about about the state of the whole network and especially about the state of her neighborhood. Uh, but uh, so. How can you can you do something like this, uh, such that uh, now you want to predict uh, uh, not uh, not how you know not not uh, 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 internet characteristics but social network characteristics and 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 uh, to my mind the salient to uh, social network characteristics uh, is uh, diameter shrinks with uh, with number of nodes and uh, more intriguingly. Uh, the existence of uh, natural cluster sizes, okay, eigen sizes. Uh, in other words, all networks, all social networks, and that includes things like um, uh, authorship networks, even uh, even 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 uh, citation networks, uh, seem to have natural cluster sizes. This means that if you subject these networks to uh, spectral analysis. Uh, you get the compositions that, uh, and then, then you look at you look at the at the at the at the frequent uh, at the sort of uh, at the uh, 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 at the uh, sizes, and they're all about a hundred of the components, and they're all very very close in in, in size. Okay, and uh, this is something that has been uh, demonstrated uh, 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 recently, sort of you know in a couple of years, a few years ago. Uh, in the work of uh, Michael Mahoney and others, uh, and uh, it uh, so far has defied the explanation. Okay, so you know there are there, there are uh, uh, works in sociology that uh, say that uh, uh, natural groups, uh, social groups, uh, sort of you know they have they have a size, and so you know hundred has come up as as a number. Okay, uh, Plato. Thought that the ideal city will have uh, 5,040 5, inhabitants. Okay, <laughs> that happens to be f seven factorial. Okay, so um, all right. Christos? Yeah. Um, it seems to me that uh, the hundred or whatever the number is is a, is a feature of human society. It's not something intrinsic that you're that you're going to come and get without putting in a constant at some point. Uh, Right. Uh, yeah, I, I have the same. I, I have the. I have the same. Uh, yeah, I have the same insight. Yeah, that 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 it, it's coming. It's coming from something. You know, but but there must be something more primitive. It's coming from. So the question is, uh, which parameters? It, if you set in the, which values, do you get hundred? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so so uh, let's 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 go a, a little bit far afield. So you know, I was I was I was planning to uh, omit that too, but but uh, but uh, but I was I was discouraged. Uh, you know, so it's backed by popular demand. Uh, uh, so, 150 years almost after Darwin, uh, uh, the theory of evolution is thriving. Uh, it's a mature field, uses sophisticated mathematics, uh, pop the population, the mathematical population, genetics. 
And uh, until 20 years ago, it was safe without data, but now it has data and it's in trouble. Okay, you know. So, uh, uh, and 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 uh, uh, it turns out that despite this flourishing, despite this this maturity, uh, some of the most uh, uh, Nagging and important and sort of you know top level questions are are uh, are uh, 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 open. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, why there is is there so much? Look around you. Okay, we are not all the same. Okay, you know if if uh, if there is an actual selection, how come it hasn't selected? Okay. <laughs> right? uh, 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 you know, and if you look at you know, if uh, if you look at at the at 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 our DNA, okay, you look at Paul's DNA, my DNA, uh, they're going to be differing like uh, three or four or five percent of 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 of, of, the, of the basis, okay, which uh, theory predicts uh, one or two orders of magnitude less, okay. How come? No. Uh, uh, also, that's an ancient one. Okay, sort of, you know, is evolution optimizing something? Okay, a lot of a lot of thinkers about evolution uh, uh, have been have been trying to uh, say, I mean, you know, can we find sort of, you know, the Lyapunov you know, function of evolution? Okay, so, you know, what what evolution is trying to do? Okay, uh, and what is the role of sex? I mean, sort of, you know, it's uh, it's uh, uh, by sex I mean recombination, and it's uh, it's a mystery. Okay, I mean, you know. There are many arguments for a combination, but uh, you know that, and I'm sure you have heard uh, many, and 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 you think that the, but the, that the, the matter is settled, but it's not. Okay, uh, the the consensus in the field of evolution is that uh, none of the theories uh, is potent enough and general enough to uh, explain. The ubiquity of, of 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 exchanging genes, okay? Because uh, I mean, if you look at the tree of life, sort of you know, tens of millions of leaves, uh, the there is an asexual species here, another here, another here, another there. There are exceptions, and uh, and their ancestral species were sexual. So asexual today's asexual species are yesterday's sexual species who lost it, okay? And this is this is mysterious. I mean, you know, it's, it makes it may, you know the, this absolute ubiquity makes makes little sense. Okay, so so these 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 are sort of three of the uh, top uh, mysteries uh, that are still still prevail in evolution. Uh, and uh, what I want to show you is sort of you know, a surprise co surprising connection with the algorithm game theory that that we found. Uh, and uh, so here is a theorem. That evolution of population is a repeated game between genes, and I have to explain what is means. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, uh, by this I mean the following: that a repeated game between genes is a mathematical object. It turns out that evolution of a population is also another mathematical object, if you believe the, the standard theories of, 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 of genetics, okay, of, of population genetics. Uh, so what I'm saying is that is that is that is that modern population genetics believes that evolution proceeds in some process. Okay, and I'm saying that this mathematical process is the same as a repeated game between genes. Right, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, with uh, one proviso that uh, that we have to go to a, one particular uh, one particular uh, 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 regime of evolution, which is called weak selection. In other words, which means that uh, there are no huge differences in selection. Right? I mean, that, that, that if there is selection, it's it ha it's it's a very weak sort of you know it's maybe uh, maybe one one percent more of that one one allele is more, one percent or something more advantageous than other. Okay. So um, sorry. Uh, so. Um, uh, good. So, uh, so what I'm, you know, so basically, what I'm saying is the following: If you are thinking, how does a particular population, you know, sort of, you know, uh, uh, the flies in Berkeley, okay, sort of, you know, how how do they evolve, okay? What is what is happening, all right? I mean, and basically, uh, uh, it turns out that uh, that. Uh, 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 it's the same. You can think of it as the genes in the in the in the fly's DNA, sitting around the table and playing a game. Okay, uh, and the game, uh, the strategies of each gene are its alleles. By alleles, I mean gene variants. Okay, so we know that that that, uh, and there are 
a few gene variants for every gene in the, pop in the population. You know, uh, uh, sort of, you know, in this room, probably there are three or four variants of the hemoglobin gene, okay? You know, so, uh, um, the probabilities of play are the frequencies in the population, okay? The common utility is the organism's fitness. So this is not Dawkins uh, selfish gene. This is the community-minded genes. Okay, so you know they all care about uh, about about the species fitness. Okay, so you know and but 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 each one has a game to play. Okay, it's a coordination game if you wish. Uh, and so you know this is mind-boggling that the genes update the probability of play through multiplicity of updates through uh, no, no regret learning. Okay, so. It turns out that this, you know, that this process is tantamount to evolution of population. Again, under weak selection. And in fact, there is a very interesting paper by uh, Mayer and Parks that uh, uh, argues that uh, you don't even need the weak selection. There is more. Okay, uh, you can. Now that we know what is the what is the what is the algorithm, well, you know, in other words, what every gene, how it optimizes its next probabilities, okay? It turns out that you can do convex programming and see what convex program would have this optimum, okay? And it turns out that there is one, okay? And uh, and it's this uh, uh, that uh, that. Uh, uh, each gene seeks to optimize. In other words, what I'm saying is that we have not found what evolution optimizes, but we have found what every gene tries to optimize. Okay, and every gene tries to optimize this quantity. Okay, which is it tries to optimize over all possible distributions over alleles. The entropy of the allele, very telling, plus S the selection strength times the cumulative fitness. Uh, these are both uh, very interesting uh, terms, okay? So, cumulative fitness means the fitness is the beginning of, uh, of the, since there, ha there have been flies, okay? Uh, old generations, uh, uh, which is very strange that, that, you, that, that this, this, this is what you do. And S is the selection strength. This means that uh, the, the closer the selection strength, the smaller the selection strength, the more you care about diversity. Okay, so uh, so it sort of you know it it uh, it uh, I think that this is a this is a very interesting equation. So you know, uh, yeah. I don't quite understand the notation. Okay. So X is the is frequencies of a given gene. Of a one gene. And the, the fitness function of the one gene depends on the other genes of the organism. Is that? Uh, uh, of course, definitely, definitely, yes. Where right. is that on, in the notation? The, the other genes. Uh, sorry. So. Um, so, the, so this is the current. Sorry, the the current. Uh, uh, sorry, f of x is uh, if you if you distribute the genes this way, given the current envi genetic environment. Okay. That's the current state very well. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, this is this is this is an inner product. Okay, between x, it's it's a linear function of x. But f has all the history. Has all the history exactly. F F contains all the history. Okay, so it's sort of uh, very you know, if you if you put this uh, this this gene in this sort of uh, you know uh, in this uh, in, in in a mix of all gene all flies that ever lived, how would it how would it be you know? What, okay, yeah. I'd like to come back to the previous slide. Your, okay. Your multiplicative updates model. Yeah. So. It doesn't seem, this doesn't seem the, the, the basic thing that's going on, at least to me. The, the genes are not intrinsically choosing strategies. What's happening is some of them survive and have offspring or through, the, through the animal being fit, yeah. others don't. And how does that translate into a multiplicative update? Uh, so well, I mean, you, you want to explain? You want to say? So you can formally prove that if you follow the equations of evolution, uh, you can map them to, you can translate them to 
every gene playing multiplicative updates. Okay. So uh, we are not we are not imputing that genes yeah. play anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are just saying that amazingly, sort of, you know, this process will be the same as. Uh, okay. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Good. Nicole. So, <laughs> you have this selection strength parameter, yeah. and the entropy, which is the diversity in the species. So I'm wondering if, and, and the selection strength, I assume, is like... It's the diversity of the gene. Yes, and the selection strength is how important it is to be very fit. Uh, no, no. How? Yes, uh, the selection strength means uh, means uh, uh, how how you know uh, selection acts on the species, right? I mean, uh, so how strong are these forces? Yes. So could you say predict that maybe top of the food chain species should have more entropy, more more diversity than very. So you, you you can, for example, predict that 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 in the Cambrian. There was very little, very little, you know, you know when, when there is upheaval, when there is a lot of selection pressure. Yeah, then there should be a loop. Then, 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 then forget diversity, okay? So, you know, go, go the winner so and run. Yeah. you playing out in various species. You know, so that, you know, either, you know, uh, I, we, we would, of course, we have been thinking day and night about, about, about sort of, you know, making, making scientific predictions based on this. I it's, it's kind of implying that there's more diversity in lions than fruit flies. Uh, that I don't know. That I don't. That, that, that I'm not sure. So you know that uh, you know fruit flies have have uh, have a tough time. I mean, you know, that, yeah, that's so uh, yeah. Very high. I see. Uh, I see. Uh, oh, I see. That's what you are saying. Okay. 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 So right. Um, yeah. Uh, incidentally, so you know, the, apparently, uh, the only the only very high selection, uh, uh, you know, event. That they have that they have discovered is in fruit flies. That that's actually very interesting. Okay, uh, you know you are right on the money. Uh, you know that uh, that um, uh, they found evidence. You know they by by looking at the flies of of of, of Holland actually you know, of all places. All right, you know that uh, uh, flies came like us from Africa. Okay, and at some point at some point apparently in Holland uh, there was. Uh, as they were going north, they were like freezing. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, apparently in Holland there was a mutation uh, that made them resistant to uh, resistant to cold, and this mutation spread like wildfire. Okay, and if a mutation spreads like wildfire, you can look at the genome of flies today, and you can find the trace. Okay, so I mean, if you think about it, uh, statisticians would would have no no, no trouble find, uh, thinking of what of what of what the, what the trace. Basically, there is there is a deep in diversity. Okay, sort of you know, around around the, around the, the the locus of the of the mutation, and and so you know, and that's the only that's the only evidence of of uh, of uh, very strong selection that they have found. So so I mean, so and of course it killed all diversity, and of course it was its fruit lies. I can't, I, you know, I can't congratulate you more for, I mean, it's, you know, amazing insight you, had, you came up with. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, good. So, uh, what I'm saying is that, is that, is that, is that this is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, informs these questions. I mean, you know, the, you know, the process I described is impossible without sex. Actually, sex is the engine be besides, behind this process. Uh, we didn't quite answer this question, but I mean, we answered a different one. Okay, so uh, and and also uh, diversity is uh, uh, sort of safeguarded in the process. Okay, so you know that's uh, in any event. Uh, that's an interesting way. Uh, that's an interesting insight that came from uh, algorithm game theory, uh, uh, and uh, turned out to be uh, somewhat informative in evolution. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to tell you something about dynamical systems. Of course, Drew will 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 uh, will uh, will tell us a lot more. But uh, but uh, but uh, uh, I want to do something else. I want to take a sort of a solution concept take on dynamical systems. Okay. So we heard the team yesterday treat uh, no regret learning as a uh, as a bona fide uh, uh, totally uh, respectable. 
solution concept, okay? Equilibrium concept. So, uh, why? Okay, is it? Uh, and what is wrong with that? And, uh, uh, you know, in some sense, to treat as a solution concept, you know, first of all, uh, no regret learning, you know, has this uh, epsilon parameter, okay? So the only principled way to do it would be to take the limit as epsilon goes to zero. And this takes us to, to a dynamical system, all right? I mean, the no regret learning becomes a replicator dynamics, all right? Um, I don't know, is this mysterious to anybody? So, you know, I can, I can elaborate. Could you elaborate? Okay, sure. Uh, sure, who asked? Just say your notation. Right. Sorry? Okay, uh, this is this is the this is the probability with which with which uh, you play you play strategy I. Okay, this is the utility if you play strategy I, uh, created by your environment, but by by the others. This is the average utility of all strategies. So this is uh, so this says uh, multiplicative weights update. If you are doing better than average, uh, may go you know uh, increase increase XI. If you are doing, if I is doing worse than average, decrease it. Is this clear? And that creates a dynamic, that creates a differential equation. It's a dynamical system, okay? Which means it creates a path, okay? So you can solve it. All right, all right. So that, that is okay. Okay. Um, okay. So here is here is what happens. All right. I mean, these are two games we know and love. This is what. Uh, matching pennies, yes, right. I mean, it was two dimensional, right? And this is what? This is uh, matching pennies uh, benign twin, sort of, you know, uh, how do you call it? When, uh, when you want to be the same, yes, I mean, the coordination game, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, all right. And uh, this, is, this, is how, this is how things work. So, what's, what's the equilibrium here, right? <laughs> so, that's uh, okay. These are the nice equilibria. But uh, we're not talking about that. Okay. <laughs> so what's the, what's the equilibrium? Uh, what's the equilibrium concept? And so you know, so you, you, uh, it turns out first of all that the right that the right uh, that the right concept here is not an equilibrium for the game. It's the equilibrium for the game and for the initial conditions. Okay. So what 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 will happen? Uh, and uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, the you know. You look at the flow at a point, and and you and you can decide what kind of equilibrium you want. Okay, so so far we have been interested in uh, in uh, Nash equilibria. This means that the flow is stationary; it does not change. Okay, stays there. All right, that's the same thing. Uh, what's what's uh, the next best thing to stationary? Okay, uh, it's periodic. Uh, if the flow is periodic, then you have a cycle. You saw this in the, in in in, in, uh, in the matching pennies. What's the next one? Okay. Well, what happens if it's not if it's not stationary? It's not cycle. It's not. Uh, then you have to look at the orbit, and it will do some strange things. Okay. So you know, and and uh, and uh, uh, it will may do a lot of very strange things. Okay. That's the point. That's the problem. That. Uh, uh, then you look at the omega limit set, as they say in in, in dynamic systems land, uh, in, uh, the, yeah, and, and basically what what uh, what uh, uh, what this means is the set of points that repeat infinitely often in the in the in the orbit. Okay, you know, so and and that's and that's uh, the limit. Sorry, the limits of the that that are limits of uh, that are limits of of uh, of uh, of uh, points in the orbit. In the trajectory, this is universal for the first time. Nash equilibrium is not universal here; it does not exist for all star for all starting points. Obviously, cycles are not universal; they don't exist for every starting point. This is universal; it exists for every start starting point. Trouble is that uh, it's uh, it's chaotic. Okay, so you know it's basically even for simple to player games, this will be uh, chaotic in general. What? In terms of uh, real game playing, like there won't be any pattern or any, because you anyway will not converge. That sort of, you know, first of all, that you don't want to look at it, uh, and and that and that uh, uh, it's universal, but uh, I, you know, I propose that 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 should not be our solution concept. Okay, that, that's what I'm saying. 
Okay. Uh, so is there something in between? It turns out there is something in between. Okay, and that's what I want to talk to you about. And something in between, I don't know how many of you know it, uh, but it's all the rage in, 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 uh, uh, in differential equations. It's called a chain recurrent set, and it is sort of like a cycle. It's, uh, it's a normal cycle. So I, I'll explain, you know, it's, uh, basically, what is a, what's the chain recurrent set? It's the following. Uh, it is uh, uh, fix an epsilon. Uh, then, uh, then it's a cycle in the sense that uh, you, follow the, you follow the trajectory, then you stop and jump by epsilon. You follow the trajectory, then you stop and jump by epsilon, and then you follow the trajectory, and then you stop and jump by epsilon. Okay, so, so it's, and you can do this for every epsilon. Of course, the number of segments will increase. And uh, the interesting question that arises here is how fast do these segments increase? In other words, uh, how, how benign is this, is this, is this uh, convergence, all right? So, uh, uh, so that's, that's, what, that's what the chain recurrent set is. And uh, I believe that this is a fine uh, uh, starting point for discussing what can be considered a, uh, a solution concept in the context of dynamics, okay? So the solution concept says you follow the trajectory? No. The, 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 the solution concept says the following, that there is these objects called recurrent cycles, which are the limits of the process I described. So the epsilon so jumps, the, you are deciding when to jump. So, so the epsilon, epsilon goes to zero. Okay, and then, then you have an object. And what I'm, you know, it's not a cycle, but it's something awfully close to a cycle. Okay, it may, you know, so, you know, chances are it's going to have a lot, you know, so, uh, you know, the point is that it's the closest you are going to get to cycle and be universal. Yeah. When you talk about jumping by epsilon, is that chosen by, by a helper who, you know, yeah. You yeah, 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 yeah. So, right. Yeah. So, I think the interesting questions here are serums of the form of from almost all starting points or most starting points, something good happens. Like some proper, after a while, the system will get yeah. high value. We have, I have one, I have one. Okay. I, I'll, I'll show you. The question is, your proposed solution with this cycle thing versus the proposed solution with what you call this chaos, would it give a different answer to yeah. this question? Yeah, I think so, yeah. It could, yeah. So how do you reconcile this with the fact that the discrete version, the, the no regret, the multiplicative upgrade, is nice. There is no chaos or anything. No, but I mean, no, it's discrete. Of course, there is no chaos, right? I mean, no, so, but, but I mean, no, so, so, there is nothing to reconcile. There is nothing to reconcile. It's very natural. Yeah, I mean, no, there could not be chaos. But the point is that uh, that uh, the only principled way, to, to the only principled value of epsilon is the limit to zero. Okay, so you know, otherwise, what is what is what is the, you know. Discontinuity at zero. There is some discontinuity at zero. You can say that. There's always one. Right. Yeah. 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 So I want to follow up on Eva's question. So if, if you had an example of a game where you could prove that with the chain recurrent cycle concept, you have high welfare, but if you look at sort of the actual dynamics, <coughs> you get this chaos and you don't have high welfare on average. How would you interpret that? What would uh, so that means about the game. Okay, so, all right, so, so I mean, both you and Eva are asking the questions, sort of, you know, that are framed, sort of, you know, in the, in the, in, in the framework from which I, I departed, okay, which is that all you need to know is how well we do, okay? Uh, forget solution, who cares about solution concepts, okay, right? So, I'm saying let's, you know, it's 10 minutes, right? So let's, let's, uh, let's talk about solution concepts. That's what, that's what I'm saying, okay? So, you know, there, 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 is, there is something else in the world, okay, right? Besides how exactly how well we're doing. That, that's, that's, I mean, probably, I mean, you know, you'll see the theorem. Nothing bad happens, okay? So, you know, you know, what, you know, the, you know the, this, these cycles unentangle, disentangle chaos, okay? Basically, these things are a principled way, a, a simple way of understanding what happens, okay? Sort of, you know, without saying, forget it, it's cows, don't look at it, okay? But, but you'll see, sort of, you know, so, so the theorem says that eventually, okay, so I'll, I'll uh, okay, 
Uh, so, you know, what is usually called the fundamental theorem of dynamical system says the following, that uh, in any dynamical system in the compact the domain, the domain is partitioned incidentally. The reason why the, 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 the trajectories I showed you were so, so nice is because that's two dimensions, and in two dimensions you have the uh, poincare bendixson theorem that says there is no chaos, okay? But uh, in more dimensions, it, it will have to be. So, uh, the domain um, is partitioned into basis of attraction for the chain recurrent sets, and the flow from any point converges under the Lyapunov functions to one of these. Okay, so this means, you understand what I'm saying? That, uh, that, uh, that uh, it's not a change in behavior at all. Okay? But, I um, mean, you know, it says that we have uh, something to hang our hat on. Okay? So, you know, a, a particular kind of cycle. Okay? That, that, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, for example, going back... So does this say that chaos is uh, measure zero in some sense? No, this, this says that chaos is, chaos is always manageable. So you know you can understand it in terms in terms of in terms of cycles and basis of attractions when it comes for dynamical for, you know, for dynamical systems of this form. Uh, uh, for example, so you know here, uh, 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 you know there are you know here uh, uh, the the chain recurrent cycles are uh, are uh, uh, the whole domain. Okay, cover the whole domain. Here, they're just uh, these, uh, and actually it's a theorem that, that for, that for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, potential games, the chain recurrent cycles are precisely the, Nash the, the pure Nash equilibrium. Okay? Uh, Does this mean, um, if you have, you have started a point, do a chain recurrent cycle, you could have arbitrary cycles then completely go in different directions? Or even the same starting point could have? Two chain recurrent cycles. Uh, the, st the same, the s you know. So what I'm saying is that there is there is an object called a s chain recurrent cycle, which covers everything. Right. You know, you know, it sort of it, it sweeps together everything. Okay, so you know, eventually it will get there. Okay, and it will be a bumpy ride, but it will be sort of you know like a a, 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 a much more uh, mm. more uh, more uh, better understood ride. Okay. That means two points close together could end up in different. Right, right, right. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, so they're not stable. The the recurrent cycle, the chain recurrent cycle. The, there is no concept of stability. They, you know, you know, they, they are in some sense the epitome of instability, right? I mean, you know, because because they are composed of, of things that come from different of different parts of the orbit. I just want to understand how chaos can happen. So you are in a cycle, you move a little bit, and, and then and then it, who knows where it goes? Yes, right, yeah. Is, is are the chains unique? These epsilons, can you make the breaks anywhere? Uh, so there is right. I mean, so so the, so there is there is there is a there is a definite set of cycles in every dynamical system. So every kind of cycle. Somewhere specific. No, no, no. The epsilons go to zero. The epsilons vanish. But in the in any fix an epsilon. Yeah. Is the one decomposition or many? Yeah. There are many decompositions. I'm sure. Yeah. And so there could be many limits also. No. 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 Sorry. No, there are many limits, but uh, but uh, but but they but they create yes. There are going to be many limits, many cycles, and they decompose the whole domain into into you know they, they attract different parts of the domain. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, so uh, all right. So that's that's uh, that's dynamical systems, and. Uh, uh, I am. Uh, uh, what do I do now? Uh, I have I have 15 minutes more, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yours ago, Eva. I'm not, I, I must have a question. I'm not the chairman, so. Okay. <laughs> you should talk to uh, Tim first. Tim is maybe a little much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So 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 let me let me let me defer questions and 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 all right. Yeah. So. Uh, um, all right, so I promise to talk about data. And basically, I know that you guys have, have been doing data, okay? So you have been, in some sense, you know, so there is a lot of work that, that, that touches data. So, you know, there are, there are works about, so, you know, getting, getting, uh, getting uh, learning uh, from samples, uh, uh, many things, including auctions and so on. But, I mean, you know, uh, 
I want to tell you that we all know that data is, is uh, that big data is, uh, is uh, a silly fad. We also know that it's real. It's in here, sort of, you know, and, 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 and uh, it's in some sense uh, the technological imperative of the day. Okay, and, 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 uh, and uh, we, have to, we have to think about it and we have to relate our work to it. Okay, so I'm going to tell you two, quickly, two stories. Uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, things we were sort of, you know, uh, there are both stories of the form that uh, how algorithmic game theory not can get help from machine learning, but can help machine learning, okay? So it's sort of, you know, in the other direction than the usual. Uh, so here is a fact that, uh, that, uh, that uh, if you want to make a, do admissions in, 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 uh, in the college, uh, uh, high school grades are less important than the number of books in the high, the high school, the household, okay? That's, that's, that's one of the statistical curiosities, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, 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 so in admissions classifier should use this, okay? So, uh, <laughs> and the problem, of course, is that uh, that uh, uh, this guy will say, "Hey, I'm out, so 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 I better I better buy some books, okay?" You know, so um, <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, you know, everybody. <laughs> So, uh, so the, the problem is that, that the data is strategic, okay? And applic applicants will buy, I mean, I'm not talking about de deception, I'm talking about truthfulness, right? I mean, they're going to uh, pay $300 and buy 17 books and, and be done, okay? So, and, uh, <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to do something like that, because otherwise you, uh, uh, you, are, in, you are in bad shape. And this way, you are you are losing uh, some good students who are poor. Okay, and, and 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 you want to maximize the score, which is the correctly the number of correctly classified points minus the misclassified points. And uh, suppose that the applicants have unit utility of being admitted, and each important has a cost c of i of x and y for moving from point x to point y. Okay, they can move their cells. In the in the in the statistical plane, but uh, they have to pay, and that's and that's how much they have to pay, and it's not necessarily a metric, okay? So you know, it's something more, all right? So okay, so uh, it's a stackable game, obviously, right? Because basically, given the distribution, the cost function, and ideal classifier, come up with a modified classifier such that when the data respond by moving to the closest admitting point, if the cost of moving, of course, is less than one, the expected score is maximized. That's this is this what you want to do. So you know the CIs. You know the CIs, yes, yeah. You know the CIs for every for every for every point. Okay, and you have the distribution of points, and you know the CIs for every point. Uh, okay, so so here are the theorems. Uh, can be done arbitrarily close to the optimum in polynomial sample complexity and time, as long as the original classification problem has low sample complexity, and does not have to be polynomial learnable, okay? That's sort of, you know, in some sense, uh, this, uh, this Stackelberg uh, notion of uh, nature of the game uh, sort of uh, levels, uh, levels out uh, complexity, okay? So, you know, it's sort of an interesting byproduct. And uh, the cost function has a finite S dimension, okay? So uh, I can explain what this is, but maybe I don't have time now. Okay. Uh, and uh, there is a companion theorem that, uh, that uh, it's, um, if, if the S dimension is large, then uh, uh, it's hard to approximate within any ratio. Right? So my point is, here is uh, one, uh, one, uh, one way for, uh, that we can use game theory concepts in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, data-centric uh, uh, machine learning problem. Okay, uh, in, in a very generic way. Okay, I, mean, I didn't tell you what the classifier, what kind of classifier we are using, or anything like that. Okay. Second vignette: uh, strategic data sources, and this is uh, this is uh, uh, was presented at Colt uh, with uh, Young and Costas. Uh, all right. So, statistical estimation. I mean, you, know, you you know, imagine that there is a ground truth function f depending on data. And you may estimate it from data points x i y i. Okay, so uh, uh, I mean, think of regression, but it's much more general than that. And you get the data points from workers. Okay, and each worker has a convex function, effort function, and with effort e, 
you know, the cost of effort from X. Uh, she comes up with uh, Y, which is in expectation F of X, and with variance, which is uh, sort of some kind of, 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 of convex function of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the effort. Is this clear? The more you try, the you know, if you try infinitely much, you are going to get very close. Okay? Is this clear? And the main, the, you know, the main assumption, you know, is that there is a ground truth we are trying to discover. Okay? It's, uh, and the point is that you have a way from data to find an approximation of f, uh, for example, linear regression. A and once you find this approximation, what your cost is, is uh, how often and how much you are going to be wrong uh, if you apply g instead of f. Is everything clear? So, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not saying anything strange, but I'm saying it very, very, very fast, okay? That's, uh, all right? Uh, Basic assumption. This loss depends only on the points you choose, the, the underlying distribution, and the convex functions. In particular, it does not depend on f. Okay, the estimation, the, the underlying unknown ground truth. The estimation is unbiased. And then, of course, uh, uh, you have to take into assumption, into into into, into uh, account any payments you make to workers. And of course, each worker has to minimize effort minus payment because, sort of, you know, we have made the units uh, be the same. Okay, what's the social optimum? Basically, you are here is what you are working with. You have to choose a subset of the workers. You have to choose uh, some points to give them. You have to choose uh, uh, E, so you know the, the 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 efforts. You you know so you know. So what I'm saying is, imagine that we are going. You know that 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 nature tries to optimize the social optimum, right? I mean, you know, says uh, the, you know these workers work, the others say stay idle. Uh, you know the points will be this, the efforts will be this. And, uh, and uh, basically, we minimize the loss plus the effort expended. Okay, that, that, that's the so that's and then you if you minimize, that's going to be the social optimum. Is this clear? Okay. The point is that this opt is your is your is your wildest dream. Here's what I mean. It means that you have persuaded the workers to exact optimum for you effort at no surplus. Okay. And uh, that's best because because there is there is uh, individual rationality. Okay, so you know you cannot do any better. So what I'm saying is that is that you cannot do better than that. Okay. And and uh, uh, the surprise is that it can be achieved. And so there is a mechanism which achieves your wildest dream, utility opt, as dominant strategy equilibrium. Okay. And. Uh, uh, this is a theorem that surprised the hell out of us, uh, but uh, but uh, it's basically one trick. Uh, that uh, you promise payments of the following form, a constant, I'll talk about it, minus another constant, I'll talk about it too. Uh, basically, the what the guy returns, the ith, uh, the ith, uh, the ith worker returns, minus what the others predict through your method that he should have returned. Okay, so this is a thinly disguised victory uh, maneuver. Okay, in other words, you pay them taking into account what the others told you. You create a curve out of that and you, okay? And uh, uh, this, you, uh, you, uh, 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 choose to have optimum effort, and uh, this you choose to get zero surplus. Okay, and uh, so that's uh, that's uh, that's a very that's a, I think a very strong result unless you think hard. And and here is here is the weakness that the, this means that the incentive problem can be solved by a surprisingly powerful contract, 
But what we don't know is how to solve the computation problem, how to compute opt, okay? Because that's, that, that's a very difficult problem. Uh, and uh, it turns out that if the XIs are fixed, even the rigid regression can be managed the same way. Okay, so, uh, all right. Uh, I believe that's all. Okay, thank you.